Hey everyone, and welcome to part 7 of our drawing tutorials. By this point, we've learned a variety of techniques to draw static objects to our game screens. However, most games involve some sort of moving part. Either the game objects themselves are kind of moving around, changing their position on screen, game objects could be growing or shrinking, rotating, there's lots of different transformations that we can apply. So in order for us to learn these techniques, we're going to have to explore transformations, which will be the focus of this tutorial. We're going to learn to transform our Pi game objects by covering some of the basic and more commonly used transformations, such as moving, inflating, updating, or even rotating game objects. So let's head over to our code and get started. Okay, so there are kind of two sets of transformations, those that apply to rectangles or potentially even other shapes, and those that apply to images. There's an important distinction between these two because if we remember, Pygame images are considered surfaces, whereas shapes are just considered shapes. Okay, so there is a little bit of a difference in those techniques. So let's start with rectangles first because those are fairly simple and kind of the more basic of the two sets of components. Now we'll start by just creating a rectangle for us to use. I'm going to call this as a Pygame Rect, just going to call it Rect. And I'm going to set this to be, let's have an offset of X of 100 and an offset of Y of 50. As for the width, I'm just going to do 100 by 100. Uh, width for 100 and height of 100, that way we have a nice square. Okay, and if we want to draw this, we should all know how to do this by now. It's going to be pygame.draw.rect. We need to pass in our screen a color. I'm going to go with blue, and then the rectangle that we want to draw. Okay, so running this should give us an offset blue square, and that is exactly what we get. Now, the first transformation that we'll cover is the basic movement transformation. We have actually kind of done something like this in the past. We simply changed the X and the Y value of the rectangle that updates the rectangle that gets drawn here. And we do kind of mimic a movement in that sense. However, that requires us to know the final X and Y positions of the rectangle. So as long as we know what they should be, that's totally fine. But we also have a function to help us to move by a certain amount. So in that case, we actually don't need to know what the current X and Y are. We just need to know by how much we want to move the rectangle. So just to kind of have this as a note, we've done rect.x is equal to 150 and rect.y is equal to, let's say, 100. We've done something like that before. But in our case, we're going to do a move by amount. So this is going to be a move. We're going to pass in the amount by which we want to shift it in the x direction and the amount by which we want to shift it in the y direction. So let's say that we actually want to shift this rectangle a bit to the left and a bit further down. Well, for that, we're actually going to do a negative 50 because left is negative in the x direction and we're going to do 50 because again y values increase as we go down and decrease as we go up. Now this actually returns a new rectangle so we're going to take our current rectangle we'll call the move function this will return a new rectangle with our x shifted left by 50 y shifted down by 50 and it will have the same width and height. So if we were to draw this now, we should see our square shifted to the left and down, and that is exactly what we get. So again, this is a way to adjust the X and Y if you already know what the values are and you know what the final value should be. This is if you want to move by a specific amount. So important distinction. The next transformation that I want to cover is the inflate transformation. As its name implies, it can grow an object, but it can also shrink an object if we pass in negative values. So for example, let's say I want to grow this by, let's say I want to double it in size. Okay, So it should be 200 wide, 200 high. Okay, We already have 100 and 100, so I'm going to call rect.inflate. And if I want my final x and y to both be 200, I simply need to increase it by a further 100. This is similar to the move function, going to return a new rectangle. So if we go to run this, we should see a much bigger rectangle that has also been shifted. And that's exactly what we're getting. Now, hopefully you can take note of something kind of interesting going on here. And that's the fact that the inflation has modified our X and Y values. 
So the reason behind this is that the inflation happens around the center point. So this means if the total inflation increased the width and the height both by 100, we're actually increasing it by 50 here and 50 here, and then 50 here and 50 here. Okay, so it's not just kind of growing it and keeping the same X and Y, it's growing it outward from the center. So again, very important distinction to note. Alternatively, if we wanted to shrink it, so it's 100 and 100, let's say we want to change it down to maybe 25 by 25, so we really want to shrink it, we can simply call rect is equal to rect equal rect dot inflate and then pass in some negative values. So we want a final value of 25, 100 minus 75 will give us 25, so we'll do the same in the y direction as well. And I know I've been using the same number for x and y, you definitely don't have to do that. You can use different, you can grow or shrink the x and y values at different rates, that's totally legitimate. But we are seeing the shrink take effect. Now the final transform that I want to cover here is the update transform. So update is just a way to set a final x, y width and height for our rectangle. Essentially it's a way to set each of these four values x, y width and height individually, but rather than doing well rather than doing it individually, it provides a way to do it all in one go. So let's kind of uh, get rid of these calls. I'm just going to comment them out. Let's say we want to change our rectangle to be at 50 and let's say 50 and 100, so we want to swap our x and y's, and let's say we want to set the x, or rather the width, to 200 and the height to 150. To do that, we would call rect.update, okay? We want to set the new x to 50, the new y to 100, we want to set the new width to 200 and the new height to 150. Now note this isn't going to be rect equals rect.update, we actually just call rect.update and it makes the changes within this original rect. It's again kind of like saying rect.x is equal to 50, rect.y is 100, rect.width is 200, and rect.height is 150. Okay, so let's see if this does indeed change it, and it does. We get our new x of 50, new y of 100, new width of 200, and new height of 150. So again, a convenient way to update multiple values at once. Okay, so those are the basic transformations that can be applied to a rectangle. Now, some of these transformations, in fact, these ones that we covered are specific to rectangles. We can't apply those same transformations to, say, a circle or an ellipse. Well, actually, ellipses do have rectangles. That might not be the best example, but perhaps something like a polygon that doesn't have a defined rectangle doesn't have these same transformations applied to them. Also, I said there are transformations that are image specific, or I guess I should say screen specific, or rather surface specific, because again, images are surfaces in Pygame. But what we'll do is we'll end this section here and we'll cover the surface transformations in a part two. Okay, so definitely play around with these transformations, the move, inflate, update, and then just setting values manually. See which ones you prefer, and when you're ready to move on, we'll learn about image-related transformations. So, thanks for watching, we'll see you in part two. Hi everyone, and welcome back. This is the second half of part seven of our drawing tutorials. In the first half, we covered transformations applied to rectangles. Now, we're going to cover transformations applied to surfaces. We will take a look specifically at image transformations because of course images in Pygame are considered surfaces, although realistically you can apply any of these transformations to any surface, including the entire game screen. The transformations that we're interested in will be movement transformations, scale, and rotate transformations. Okay, so let's start by creating an image. We'll load an image and I'll just call this apple is equal to pygame.image.load and we want to load apple.png like so. Again, feel free to use a different image if you are not particularly taken by this apple image. Okay, cool. So now we have an image. We need to get the rectangle if we want to display this image. So we can just say something like rect is equal to apple.getRect, and that will just get the bounding rectangle surrounding this image. Drawing it is then as simple as blitzing it to our screen. 
So we'll take our screen, we'll call the blit function, we'll pass in the image, so that is just going to be our apple, and then we'll pass in the rectangle, which is just going to be our rect here. So if we were to run this, we should just see that little apple in the top left-hand corner of the screen, or whatever image you loaded in. Okay, totally expected. Okay, so like I said, the first transformation we want to apply is the movement transformation. Now, this is actually a callback to part one, because the way in which we move an image is via the rectangle in which it's drawn. So in actuality, moving an image is really no different from moving any other rectangle. We'll simply call rect is equal to rect dot move, and then we'll pass the amount by which we're moving this image. So let's just say 100 by 100, so we can move it kind of into the center of the screen. If we go to run this, we should now see our apple move because we've updated the X and the Y position of the rectangle to 100 by 100. It should be noted, however, that if we did something like this, let's say we moved this rectangle, uh, but instead of using that rectangle that we created up here, we are just getting the apple's current rectangle and using that to draw it, it will not have moved. Okay, the reason being, when we are calling this, we're actually fetching the rectangle of the apple and storing, or rather creating a new variable with these same attributes. We're then moving that rectangle. So when we drew the apple at the rectangle here, what we're doing is we're taking the attribute stored in here, which is 100, 100, and then the width and height of the apple. And then we're drawing it based on that. However, if we get the apple.getRect, the image itself hasn't changed. Even though we've updated the X and Y of this rectangle, we haven't updated anything within this surface. The apple itself hasn't changed. So when we get the apple's original rectangle, that is why we don't see any movement there. Okay, so I do just want to leave that in so that you have a record of that having happened. Okay, great. So we know how to move an image, and that's great. What about the other transformations? So similar to before, we're going to do a kind of like an inflation transform, except this time it's going to be called scale. Scale works a little bit differently. With the scale function, we actually put in the final width and the height, rather than the amount by which we are scaling. Okay, so it is a little different from inflate that way. Also, there will be some kind of perhaps weird behavior going on, but more on that in just a second here. Okay, so to transform our apple, we're going to call pygame.transform, because this is now part of the transform library, and we're going to call upon scale. You'll know it takes in a surface, it takes in a size, okay, and a destination surface. We don't really need to deal with that. And note that it returns a surface, okay? So let's pass in our surface, which is going to be the apple. We'll need the new size, which is going to be a tuple with a new width and height. I think let's have this be pretty big. Let's have it be 200 by 200. That way we can really see the effects take place. And then of course we will have to store it back into apple because this returns a surface and we want to draw the most up to date surface. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. Okay, great, so we are getting our big apple being drawn here. Now the weird thing, potentially kind of weird thing that's going on here, is the fact that even though we're using this rect variable, which should have a width and height of just what the initial Pygames image was, we're clearly seeing a much bigger apple. So even though it is taking into account the updated X and Y values of the rectangle, it is ignoring the width and the height values of that rectangle to be taken place by this uh, scale operation, which is then kind of resetting those values. And it's overriding the width and the height of that rect. Okay, so do want to make sure that we kind of know what's going on with that one. Okay, so the final transform that I want to highlight here is the rotate transform. 
So if sometimes we want to rotate an object, we can rotate it by any amount that we want, uh, except that this time the rotation is in degrees, which is kind of confusing. I'm not sure why Pygame chose to do some of its angle related operations in degrees and some of them in radians, but unfortunately that's just something that we have to work with. Okay, so let's say we want to rotate this by 180 degrees, so essentially flip it upside down. Well, we can call pygame.transform dot rotate okay we need a surface so that is going to again be our apple we can use the same one even after the blow up it can kind of be rotated there okay we'll need that apple we'll need a amount of degrees by which we are going to rotate it so let's say 180 again that should flip it completely upside down and then again we're going to need to store that back into our apple surface so that we can have all these transformations be applied so if we go to run it, we're now seeing our upside down apple. Again, keeping in mind, it is keeping the same rectangle or rather at least the same X and Y position. But of course, after the scale up, it is kind of overriding those width and height values. OK, so that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. Just wanted to show you some of the more common transforms. There are a couple more transforms that you potentially could be interested in. But these are the ones that we would be working with for the most part. If you are interested in those more obscure or more specific transformations, then feel free to check out the documentation. But this combination of movement, scaling and rotation should give us pretty much all of the functionality that we need. OK, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.